My guest today is Peter Leeson. Peter, how are you? Well, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to have you back on my show after a couple of years. Yes, it was two years, three years ago. I can't remember exactly yeah. how many, but it was years with an S. Yeah. I definitely Plural. don't remember what we talked about, so uh, this <laughs> might be really a repeat performance. I think it was, well, I can't remember the exact details, but I, I remember it was after your keynote. And I remember your keynote was excellent, uh, they, but all your keynotes are excellent. So I, I, <laughs> even you. that, it's hard to Thank nail you. down exactly which one. <laughs> what should we talk about today? Um, I always talk about quality, so uh -huh. I guess sooner or later we'll talk about quality yeah. in one form or another. You did, you did a couple of talks. You talked yesterday during your keynote at IT camp about yes. quality, and you're going somewhere else to do another uh, look at it from a different angle, is that the idea? Yes. Is that what you mean? So um, yesterday, yesterday, the idea was to try and answer the question, how do you measure quality rather than how do you measure lack of quality, which is what people are usually doing. Oh, that's an interesting. So define that statement. Expand on it. So the, when, when talking about measuring quality, people are always talking about measuring defects, uh, measuring uh, failures, um, the, the cost of quality and so on. Okay, so it's a negative. It's a negative. Minimize defects, minimize yes. failures. So the, there's there's the concept that two negatives must make a positive. Yeah, so they're defining so, it by something that yeah. is not. Yes. Which is not a great definition. And so my idea is to try and turn it into something positive and say how can I positively measure the quality um, and design it into it. And I cheated somewhat in the keynote, which I don't think anybody noticed, even though I did stress the fact that halfway through I changed over from measuring to quantifying. You changed the, your verbiage or you changed the meaning or what? I changed my verbiage okay. because um, I'm not yet, I don't yet have the solution as to how to actually measure the quality, oh. but I was talking about quantifying the quality. Well, what's the difference? Uh, Quantifying is the speed you're doing, measuring is what's on your speedometer. Okay. So you might be driving too fast at 30 miles per hour. That is quantifying. Okay. Um, the fact that there is actually a number attached to it would be the measurement. Okay, so the raw measurement is the, or the raw value is the measurement and sort of the meaning and context. Yeah. is the quantification. So the quantifying is I want to reduce this, I want to increase this no matter where it is. Okay. And it's it's a little bit vaguer, but measurement is translating quantification into numbers. Okay. Uh, what, uh, so are, is there hope? I mean, so people are now measuring or quantifying by <laughs> quality is not <laughs> Not unquality. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have we got to somewhere where we can actually so, tell people how to measure quality? The, the, the number one question is helping people to understand what is quality. Right. Because it's something which is very vague. We all talk about it, but nobody actually knows what it is. Uh, and, and and in, it's, in writing code, yeah, that's very, very true. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's come to these abstract concepts of fit for purpose, satisfies requirements, and sure. so on. And that's not quality, that is contractual obligation. Oh, hmm, if, okay. If you're not respecting the requirements, you're not doing your job. Isn't that a factor in quality? That's, that's way before quality. Way that, before, that, that okay, is, right. that, that is so you low. You're, you're saying you can't even start talking about quality yep. until at least you've met this minimum yes. level of requirements. Okay. If, if, if I buy a car and it doesn't have wheels on it, then it doesn't irrelevant. matter how comfortable it is, the I rest see. doesn't matter. Oh, okay. So satisfying requirements for me, and even exceeding expectations, which is the other term that's frequently used sure, for I me, use that a lot, actually. Is, is basic contractual obligations. Okay. It's doing what people, what you should be doing. Okay. Okay, again, if, if I buy a car, um, I'm buying it to get from point A to point B, and I want it to go fast, or I want it to be comfortable, or I want it to be cheap, whatever it is, or environmentally friendly, mm -hmm. And then there is the additional thing that I really like about it. Mm -hmm. And I am buying the car basically because of that additional thing. Hmm. It's, it's, maybe it's the, the cool, wow factor. Maybe the coolness. Yeah, yes, the know. coolness. It's, uh, oh look, they, they've, got the, 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 they've got a tablet in order to 
manage the radio <laughs> and yeah. uh, it's a gadget All right. but it's the wow factor it's, I did I can relate to yeah. this I just bought a Ford Mustang mm -hmm. and I live in downtown Chicago where this car looks really amazing going 20 miles an hour in city traffic yeah. <laughs> that's yes. the wow factor I, for me <laughs> it's it's I, I had to buy a car a few years ago because I've been uh, working as an international consultant mm -hmm. working around the world for many years I never had a car because it would stay parked in right. airports and train stations everywhere right. and then I took on a permanent job mm -hmm. which is 15 minutes to drive from my home and it's um, two hours about by public transport I see. so I had to buy a car and I said, okay, so I'm buying a car to drive 15 minutes through town in the morning, 15 minutes through town in the evening. Question, is Lamborghini quality? Okay. <laughs> in it that isn't. context. It isn't. Uh, okay. It's, it's all the wow factors yeah. that Lamborghini uh, yes. has, like, like going from zero to 120 miles an hour in two seconds are it's, not... They don't, yeah, they, <laughs> uh, I'd never get to use that. And that criteria, so, yeah. your example. Okay. <laughs> and it's it's trying to understand that, and then trying to quantify your quality based on what is the wow factor you want to produce, and for who you are producing it. Okay. So if I'm trying to sell a software or a product to a startup company or to a multinational or to a company that has passed its best and is on the decline and trying to recapture its market, they're very different wow factors I want. Sure. This, and it's trying to understand that and designing it into the product from before you start. Hmm. So That seems a key. Is that, when you were a consultant, is that a key piece of what you're talking, telling people about quality is start early? Yes. So, so when, when I was a consultant, I always used to say, if you're paying me $100, I need you to feel you've had at least $101 worth of value out of me. Okay. Um, and it's difficult to quantify because right. as a consultant, I'm telling people stuff and then getting out of it before they actually do anything about it. Right. Um, what was it? If you know how to do something, you do it. Um, if you don't know how to do it, but you know the theory, you teach it. If you're not quite sure of the theory, you become a consultant and get the hell out of the place before they see the results. <laughs> so we say, in America, we say those who can do, those who can't teach, and those who can't teach, consult. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a variation on it. <laughs> and I, I said that frequently as a consultant. I thought I'm allowed to say that. Okay. <laughs> I'm an ex-consultant myself. Yeah. Um, so it's just trying to get people to understand it. And, and for me, it comes then down to, and that's the subject of my, my next talk, which I'm giving this afternoon, mm -hmm. which is that quality is produced by the people. Okay. Full stop. It doesn't matter what technology, what tools you're using, um, what methodologies, what standards, what work practices, whatever. It all comes down to the people. Okay, so and the, the corollary is that you should be focusing your attention yes. on the people if you want to improve quality. So the, the, the tools, whether they are processes or technology, the tools are there to support the people mm -hmm. to make it easier for them to produce good quality. All right, that's fair. I actually... I, I wrote a whole blog post on this years ago. When I was a consultant, I took a step back one day and I thought, am I a technologist? I work with technology all day. I work for a technology company. And uh, my conclusion was I am not a technologist. I am a problem solver. And problems are often yeah. people related. Yes. I may use technology to help solve those problems. It's a, it's a tool. Uh -huh. It's but. a tool. And, and in the, the software industry, I, I get so annoyed with these companies that want to do everything according to the principles of Agile or CMMI or okay. whatever other. They are tools ah. and sometimes very good tools and frequently completely misused. Ah, okay. Why would you only use one tool for all your problems? Right. Okay, if you're in the building industry, sometimes you need a screwdriver, sometimes you need a hammer. Ah. And whichever technology you're talking about, it's very good in the right context, and it's a waste of time and money in an other context.
Are there some more general principles that can apply across industries to help people to improve their quality? Yes, so this is the, the starting point of my talk this afternoon, is that I, I have been working in the IT industry for over 40 years and had a few jobs before that as a student and in the whatever it is 45 years that I have been working in companies around the world I found there's one thing which always comes back and that is that the people who are really productive and creative all share one characteristic and that is that they are happy and enjoying their job hmm. and so that's basically where I'm starting from this afternoon is how do you make people happy at work? Hmm. And is that, uh, so you're starting with that question. Are you going to answer yeah. the question before the yes. end of the talk? Yeah. Tell, tell oh, us. Tell oh, us. Yeah. We, can, we won't tell anybody. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's most of the talk. <laughs> I mean, it's most of the talk. It's finding what are the things that people need. And um, it leads up from basic concepts like you need, you need a decent salary. Sure. Um, and it goes up to probably the most difficult one, and that is trust. Ah. You need to trust your management, and your management needs to trust you. Okay. And that's, that's the most difficult one, especially when you start talking about measurements and metrics, because I know they're going to use this measurement of me to mm. punish me at the end of the year. <laughs> and in, in, my, in my day job, I've just gone through the yearly reviews and I've been, I started off with my line manager mm -hmm. and uh, I had to give my own appraisal to him and so I walked in and I said these yearly reviews are a complete waste of time, <laughs> they're demoralizing, they're demotivating. The idea is that I will come in and say how good I am and that I need more money and you're going to tell me how bad I am and that I shouldn't get more money <laughs> and we'll argue for a while and then we agree. So I filled in my bit. I've done my job. I think I've done it fairly. I don't think I've done more than what was expected. <laughs> I don't think I've done less than what's expected. Can we move on now? <laughs> what was his and response? He enjoyed it okay. because it's, <laughs> it's one of the shortest reviews he had <laughs> because he didn't have to argue. <laughs> That's funny. I actually spoke at Yonder, where you're speaking, mm -hmm. yes. and I brought up your annual reviews. Uh, my talk was about more from, not from the management side, but from the employee side. And mm -hmm. uh, annual reviews, I didn't call them a waste of time, but they're flawed in a lot of they're, ways. And I encouraged people to, to manage their career between reviews. And don't wait for your yeah. manager. Because too many companies, they, you know, 12 months later, they... They've either forgotten what you did yes. in February, or mm. they're, um, or they might have even moved on, and, uh, and or they may have misinterpreted. Desperately going back through twelve months, trying yeah. to remember <laughs> what the heck you were doing, what was good, what uh -huh. was bad. It's, it's just another measure yeah. of quality, right? The quality of the people doing that work. Yeah, you know, obviously they have they're they're producing something. They're producing downstream that's, uh, that has it, some it's a misuse trying to measure of quality, measurement. but the, the, the managed companies are implementing some measurement of the quality of the individual because yeah. uh, they're basing bonuses and salaries mm -hmm. and retention on that. And, and annual reviews, I, I agree with you. I, was, I won't go so far to say they're a complete waste of time, but uh, because sometimes they get a bonus or a raise out of them. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they are flawed in many ways. Yes. I, I want them on a continuous basis. Yes. Like a weekly review yeah. is much yeah. better. And that's why I, I, I want I want weekly meetings with my management right. who is going to tell me what I've done well or badly and where I can give feedback. Very at least weekly communication. Yeah. The, the yes. Meetings aren't always possible, but communication definitely. Yeah, well, what not yeah. emails. Right. I, I've grown to have a loathing of emails. Uh, well, my boss is in another state. He's two states away, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's I get a challenge sometimes. I get between 100 and 150 emails per I know, day, I know. <laughs> and that just if you contact me by email. There's a chance I will never read it. <laughs> and I'm starting to feel better about the fact that I've lost your email address. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about quality in your book, right? Yes. Um, what's, uh, what do you, what's your message in here? Which, uh, how many chapters? So the word quality is actually the title. How many chapters do you say are devoted to quality? I think all of them. All of them are devoted to quality. Okay. Um, <laughs> not always obvious. Not always obvious. But you know this because you wrote a review which is in the first pages of the book. I liked anyway. it a lot. <laughs> Um, it's, it's again focused on the people aspect. So one of the uh, things that I'm trying to push 
is rather than having companies that are based on an old-fashioned hierarchy of kings and barons, I want companies that are organized around the knowledge flow. Right. So you should be getting the knowledge, the information, the whatever it is you need, when you need it, rather than having to ask questions which have to go five levels up in the hierarchy to go five levels back down the other side and you get your answer six months later okay and it isn't even the answer to the question you asked yeah uh, so more more uh, uh omnidirectional full communication yep. is one thing and then fewer layers so the yes. inhibit communication so, is so another i i don't care if you're a business analyst or an architect or a designer or a coder you should get the answer you need when you need it you should understand what your clients are looking for at all times and how that impacts on your work. Did you just say that uh, in this edition, my review is in the book? Yes. I didn't know that. I, let me see this. So I'm gonna check this out. Feedback, is it on this section? No, it's a little bit further. Let me see that. Oh, look at oh, my picture too. Yeah, I did not know that. Yes. Oh my, so I have an, an autographed copy of the book, but yeah. obviously it's not this edition because okay. I read that and produced that. Well, oh, we gotta get this. So, Look at this. Look at the, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> That's going in my annual review right there. It, and the picture was the picture taken, was taken right this here, right here, <laughs> at uh, IT Cap in Cluj. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you. So I'll have to give you a new copy. Of I, I'm gonna hold you. <laughs> Peter, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Do you still finish off with a statement about technology and friends? Yes, I do. And you just did. Okay. <laughs>